All right, hello all. So I'm going to be discussing the results of my two surveys. One was a student survey um, for middle schoolers, and another was a teacher survey um, just about teachers using technology in the classroom. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, so my student survey, uh, which was aimed at uh, middle schoolers, was taken by a class of eight, seven and eighth graders, seventh and eighth graders. And um, with the survey, I was really trying to find out two things. One, um, what their interests are in terms of extracurricular activities and in terms of their school subjects. And um, another was to get a sense of their home situation in terms of uh, family income and access to technology and just kind of what their life is like inside the classroom. So with the first part, um, with discussing their their interests, um, I had three questions. Um, one of which was just, what are your favorite subjects? Um, another was, what after school clubs they attend. And then another was just what their interests are um, outside the classroom. So a lot of interesting stuff, actually not exactly what I expected. Uh, with their interests, um, there were not a lot of commonalities. Um, there were two students who had video games and then everybody else had something different. Uh, it really is kind of a wide range of interests. One student wrote comics and drawing, another wrote music, another wrote swimming, another wrote football. Um, so it's kind of a broad range of uh, personal interests, which I think is great because it means that um, there's kind of a lot we can explore in terms of what topics I cover and what activities I do in the classroom. There will always be somebody that might be able to kind of take the lead and really show an interest. And uh, it kind of opens up the class, I think, in that way. Um, the same uh, results I saw in terms of after school clubs, six of the eight students were in after school clubs and again, a uh, pretty broad range of subjects there. Uh, an English club, art club, chess, uh, different sports. So that was also really cool. And um, so while I saw a lot of variety in their extracurricular interests, their subject interest actually um, was a very different result. Uh, five out of the eight students uh, said that a science class was their favorite subject, uh, whether it was bio, physics, and chemistry. Um, the other three students said math, technology, and English, respectively. So since I work at a school, it's a language center that um, really puts a big focus on project-based learning using STEAM subjects. This is excellent information to have because um, you know, while I shouldn't just focus on science subjects, um, when I'm choosing my projects for uh, the, the project-based learning portion of the class, um, it's good to know that there is such a strong interest in science among the students. Um, that means I can kind of lean heavily on that and lean heavily on that also for the English portion of the class as well. Um, with regards to the other questions about um, their home life, so what the, the questions I had that were kind of geared in that direction were how many people live in your home um, and who lives in your home. So generally, you know, in Southeast Asia with poor families, um, you will see multi -gener multiple generations in one household when the, the families of lower income. And you might also have extended family like grandparents or aunts, uncles, cousins living in one house as well. Um, so. I had that question. I had a question about what technology they have available at home. Uh, they just had to tick off laptop or computer, tablet, um, smartphone, game system, or other. But really, I'm looking for those first three: uh, laptop or smart or computer, tablet, and smartphone. And also, um, what are your responsibilities at home? Um, whether they have to only do homework and studies and cleaning or if they also have to do cooking, taking care of a sibling, taking care of a grandparent, or even helping out with their parents at work, because a lot of them run you know, small shops or a small restaurant, and they essentially go from school to work, a lot of these kids. Um, so because it's a learning center, it's kind of expected that my kids are middle income and up, uh, because this is an extracurricular um, 
language center, basically, after school classes. So these results did not surprise me very much. Um, seven out of eight students only had their immediate family living in the house. One other person had grandparents living there. Um, and six out of eight students had at least two of those three initial technologies, a uh, smartphone, tablet, and laptop. Only two of the students had access to a laptop or a computer. So broad uh, range of, um, or I'm sorry, just a across the board, students have access to technology at home. And in terms of responsibilities at home, the majority of them really just have to do homework and cleaning. Uh, a couple of them listed maybe take care of a sibling, but for the most part, these kids um, are able to focus on themselves or are able to focus on their studies at home. So what this tells me is I can maybe give a little bit more uh, tech-focused homework. If these kids are able or have access to a tablet or a smartphone at home, and they all do, then um, <clears throat> I can give something a little more uh, interesting. I can find an app. I can find maybe, or I can have us do shared work, you know, do use Wakelet or, or Google Docs or something. Um, and then in terms of the teacher survey, let's jump to that. So really I was just looking at kind of broad questions about how teachers use technology in the classroom and what they think the strengths and weaknesses of that are. Um, so the three teachers I surveyed, they all use technology to some degree. One of them, really it's, there's the two teachers I surveyed and the one are kind of in the two groups here. One of them uses technology quite a bit. They also use tablets. They do almost every lesson with a projector and a laptop. They use PowerPoints and a lot of visuals and music and that kind of thing. So they're very kind of heavily dependent on at least that basic suite of technology. The other two, much less so, um, really just use a laptop for keeping track of assignments. Their students do work um, with Word Processor and Google Docs and they communicate with their students with email. So interesting to see kind of the, where these two um, were on the spectrum. Um, the one who is heavily dependent on technology, I asked the question that was, what are some hindrances uh, of tech using technology in the classroom? And she said, basically, if the power goes out or internet goes out, she is really in trouble, uh, has to completely reform the lesson. Whereas the other two said, that the hindrance from technology was really just about when they bring technology into the classroom, there can be a bit of distraction, or um, one of them actually said that playing a video every class created an unrealistic expectation in their students, um, in that they always expected a video and were disruptive when they didn't get one. So some interesting responses there. And then uh, my last question was just um, basically a broad question of how you generally feel about technology in the classroom. Is it an overall positive or an overall negative? And all three of them said that it was an overall positive, despite some of the, you know, kind of minor drawbacks. It can be a distraction. Kids can use it to access games or get off track. Um, there can be problems with the technology. Um, overall, they said it was definitely a positive and added uh, a lot of kind of dynamism to the classroom. So that's it for my surveys. Thanks very much for listening. Bye, guys.